When I first became a trainer, one of my most profound certifications I ever went through was the Vivo Barefoot Coaching Program. Pretty awesome because I learned a lot about barefoot biomechanics and how it can, from the ground up, help you to be optimized in your performance. Pretty cool stuff, right? And then another technology that I was playing with or sort of researching around that same time was grounding and earthing and how powerful that is. Today, I now truly know what it means because I can test it and I use it constantly throughout my life. Knowing that those two things help to shape my foundation as a trainer and as a holistic health coach, you might understand why I'm so excited to find that these two technologies have actually come together in one product by Vivo Barefoot called the Grounded Boot. Might be wondering what exactly is grounding one of the easiest ways i can explain it is creating an analogy with charging your cell phone when your cell phone battery runs low you might think that you need to go and charge it at some point if not right away so that your phone can continue working and optimizing your communication now if you think of all the cells in your body each cell acts like a capacitor or like a battery. So if you can imagine the trillions of cell phone batteries that we have in our body, whenever they run low on voltage or energy, we need to charge those. And so we have access to free charging or free energy from the earth known as free electron. The earth is constantly emitting free electrons we just need to connect to it. We need to dock into the earth. We get farther and farther away from nature by simply putting insulation throughout our homes and insulation around our feet in the form of plastics or certain rubbers that don't allow us to get grounded. And so when you can have a shoe that actually has a conductive sole and you connect it either indoors or outdoors to the earth, when we go outdoors, I put a grounding stake in the ground to measure the grounding capability, the measurement of the energy that's coming from the earth and how it affects our body. And some of the benefits of that is reduced inflammation, better circulation, which can then lead to a whole cascade of effects, which may improve your sleep, brighten your mood. You may also, like your cells will either kill themselves off because it will have the energy to do so, or will actually recycle those cells. At the end of the day, if you wanna optimize your health and wellness, grounding and earthing is something that we should really consider. And if you're skeptical, there's plenty of ways to measure that, and I can show you that. There's a variety of testing methods out there. You can use a continuity tester or conductivity tester, a voltimeter or voltmeter. You can also use, there's a, a product that I have by intuition physician, Dr. Laura Conover. She makes sort of a, a device that actually measures the resistance of the free electrons from the earth. And so I'll take you through each of these because they're all quite different. And I think at the end of the day, as long as you get out of this what you need to understand if this is gonna work for you or not, that's all that really matters, right? And so I'm not gonna say that this is the be all end all. This is just a way of testing so that you can then make a decision on how you best want to ground. Okay, the first thing I wanna do is make sure that any of the plugs that I'm using, I wanna make sure that they have a correct ground. This is a socket tester, just to make sure that we have a correct ground coming out of the socket so that we don't have any issues with our testing. And so when this is correct, what you're gonna see is two orange or yellow lights come on, the red light stays off. Plug into your socket. I have this grounding strip there, and as you can see, we have a correct ground. Two orange lights, no red light, so we're good to go. So that will be sort of your first level of testing. The next level of testing in the way that I see it is I wanna know if it's conductive or not, which means are you able to, whatever surface you're touching this on, is it going to ground you? It's either a yes or no. This is known as the continuity tester. Got a little battery inside, kind of like a watch battery. As soon as I turn it on, you're gonna see a flash of a green light. That just tells me that the battery is still in good working condition. So I flip this on, flash of a green light. On the back of this, there's a little metal strip that looks also like a, a watch battery. And that's what we're going to place on certain materials to find out if it's grounded or not. So I'm gonna take this off of the body band and I'm gonna connect this to the little button snap here on the bottom of the continuity tester. Now it's ready because it's in the on position, it's ready to test. If I place it on my skin and I'm not grounded, there is no light. You see that? I can place it pretty much anywhere, there's gonna be no green light. Now, if I place this same thing, I've changed nothing except I'm now going to put this on my 
grounding strip on the ground here, you should see a green light. There you go. So now if I lift this up, no ground, put it down, there's a ground. Okay, so what if now, if I wanna test how that effect can get to my body, what I'm going to do, this is very tricky, pretty cool. So I'm gonna place this on my body, there's no light, but the moment that I even put just one of my toes on this grounding pad, watch this, beep, there's a light. Light. Toe on, toe off. Toe on, toe off. That's just one small piece of my body because our entire skin, the organ of our skin, is piezoelectric. It's conductive, highly conductive, especially if you're well hydrated and your skin is moist enough. This can be a really good tool to say that that material is conductive, this material is conductive, and if you sleep on a grounding mat or while you're working at home, you put, you put your feet or any part of your body on the grounding mat, you're going to be grounded, okay? All right, so this one is gonna be the next level of testing that I'm gonna show you today. So what I like about this, instead of having a little watch battery like piece of, uh, of metal on the back of the continuity tester, this one here is a square button that is also metal. This piece here is connected to the grounding port. And now if I put my finger on this button, there's gonna be a series of lights. This high represents high resistance, which means there is a resistance of free electrons coming from the earth into my body. That means we don't want that. That means it's not necessarily grounded. The okay or the medium resistance means that you're getting some level of grounding, which is probably good enough, but we wanna, obviously we wanna go for low resistance, which means we're getting a constant flow of electrons when we are grounded. And so when I push this button and nothing is grounded, you're gonna see that it's high. If I do this and I place my foot on the grounding pad, we're gonna see that this will change, okay? So I'm gonna start with my foot off, put my foot on, and it goes to low resistance. That's pretty cool, and you can measure this outside. Uh, in fact, I will do that. I'm gonna take this, instead of plugging it into the, the socket, I'm gonna plug it directly into the ground, the, the earth. I'm gonna plug it into the earth, and that's gonna act as my grounding port. And then I'm gonna go and test different materials while I'm outside. I normally don't uh, wear my shoes or boots with no socks, but because these are pretty new, brand new, I haven't quite broken them in enough to get a good readout all the time. So as we know, our feet sweat, and so if you have uh, socks on that are like natural fibers, then it should be conductive. You can obviously test that to make sure. But for now, I'm gonna do this with no socks on, and uh, I wanna be able to show you what it's like to have a shoe that also gives you the same effect or a similar effect. All right, so now that I have my boots on indoors, which is a little weird, <laughs> but now that I have those boots on, I now will take this pure ground test meter to measure the resistance to see if there's going to be any type of flow or resistance to the flow of, of free electrons. So as we did before, you notice, turned it on, it usually measures high, which means high resistance. And then when I did the test earlier with my bare feet, it went to low, which means superb conductivity. Now I'm gonna test this again. My bare feet are inside the grounded shoe, the grounded boot. My boots are on top of the grounding mat. And so here we go. It's not low resistance, the lowest resistance or superb conductivity, but it's really good. In fact, it's as good as, as any type of grounding. It's just that when you get to the low resistance, that means that it's probably the best kind of grounding you can get. So there are levels of grounding, but again, here we are. And I don't even have my weight in the shoe necessarily, but it just goes to show that the conductive sole is working on the conductive mat, on the grounding mat, and then that is transferring through my finger. Okay, so here we go. So if I take my feet off, feet on, feet off, Feet on, that means it works. Now let's transfer this to outdoors. Obviously we don't spend, we should not spend our entire day and night indoors unless you do have a way of mimicking the sun, which is pretty interesting to do, which we can do. And if you're mimicking earthing or grounding, that's okay because sometimes you do have to stay indoors. But if you can get outside to get the free energy from the sun 
and the free energy from the earth, then why not do that? And so I want to do that in a, a shoe or a boot that looks good. And also it fulfills the three main criteria when it comes to the footwear that I like to wear. Wide, thin, flexible. All right, now one very important thing is if you're like me and you don't quite like wearing your shoes or boots with no socks on, if you're like me and you wanna wear socks with it, it's important to find a sock that is with natural fibers. There are the different companies that make conductive socks, but you can even have just like pure cotton or any kind of conductive material. And the best way to know if it works is to test it. I'm gonna put on my cotton fiber socks and I'm gonna do this test one more time because I don't want you to think like, oh, wait a minute, it only works if I don't have socks on. That's not true. So as long as the shoe is sort of broken in a little bit, it's not fresh out of the box, you wanna do the testing after you've worn it a little bit just to make sure that the fibers inside the shoe are connecting with this grounded sock, okay? So go back to the same testing that we did before. So if my feet are off, no ground, ground. So we're gonna have some fun outside. I'm gonna change and uh, see you there. Okay, so obviously we're outside now. I got the grounded boots on, as you can see. Wanted to kind of dress it up a little bit so you can see what it might look like if you're strolling around outside with your grounding boots. Like I did indoors, we wanna test the environment to make sure that it works. Obviously we're, we're outside, so the earth is the perfect grounding port. So we're gonna take the end of this and we're gonna plug this directly into the earth. Okay, you wanna find a spot that is kind of moist so that there is enough moisture to be able to read this. And then we're gonna do the testing like we did indoors, but now we're gonna test it outside. So here we go. We're gonna plug this in, in this, this little soft spot here. And then we're gonna test to see if this works. Okay, so here we are. And I'm gonna push the button and it shows that it's okay. Now the reason why that works is because I'm, I have my grounding shoes on. If I were to do the same thing, maybe I get on top of this tree here. So if I get on top of this tree, everything is still hooked in and it's the same, but there's no ground. Why is that? I'm standing on a cut tree, right? This, this tree has been cut which means it's not directly connected to the earth with its roots. Therefore, this is not a good grounding spot. If I put my hand on it, because of the moisture in my body, I'm able to generate enough of a connection to the ground through that. Okay, so here we go. Great conductivity. Hand off, no ground, hand on ground. Okay, there's not enough of a connection to be able to get that with my, just my shoes. So I'll try it again. No ground. I hop on the ground. And it's very grounded. I think the next thing to do is to test out other areas that might be good for grounding. Because if you don't want to stay indoors, you don't yet have a good grounding shoe, then you might think, okay, if I have an extra spare five minutes to be able to, to get some grounding in, because it doesn't require a lot of time. The more time you do ground, the better. The, the, the more voltage your body can generate, the more your cells can actually do what they're supposed to do. But even just doing it for five minutes or so is perfect. When I did a podcast with Dr. Conover, we talked about just touching the, the sink faucet because that metal is connected to the grounding source in the, in the home. Now, I realize this looks weird. <laughs> I've got a, a boot on and a tennis shoe on. But the purpose of this is to show you the difference between being grounded and not grounded. So if I stand on the foot without a grounded source, a grounded shoe, that's what happens. I stand on the other shoe and it goes to okay. The good thing is you can hear this. This just proves that we're getting grounded and the more I wear the shoes, the better the grounding will be because my feet will get a little more damp and also the fibers that are stitched throughout the, the sole of the shoe will be in more contact with your body. So I do have the socks on, like I talked about before. So that ensures that we have a good connection and that's what's important. 
And now we can go and test other sources. I'm going to put my other boot back on so it feels normal. And uh, we're going to go and test some other sources to see if you're actually grounded. Testing it to see if it works. It's superbly grounded. Okay. Now, if I stand on concrete here, this curb, there's a little bit of a ground. Okay. It's not superb like it was when I was standing on the, on the grass and dirt, but it's okay. Now, if I step off, no ground. So this concrete here, this concrete path is not grounded. However, this bit of concrete is because it's closer to the earth. It's actually in touch with the earth and concrete does have conductive properties in it. So that should give you a clear indication of what is actually being grounded. I get asked all the time, is concrete conductive? I always say it depends. So if you really want to know, go and test it. So I think the best thing for me to do right now, just so you can understand how the grounding boot definitely works, put on a regular shoe with no grounding sole and then go and retest some of these properties, okay? And see what works best. So bear with me. <laughs> because the grounding shoes work so well, it wasn't allowing me to have like a proper test happen here, right? So I wanted to make sure that I am now not wearing the grounding shoes and I wanna be able to get a sense for, is there a real difference between that shoe and a shoe that is not grounded? So I'm standing on the earth. We saw that this was a superb ground and now you see, because I don't have those shoes on, this is not grounded. Standing in the same place, if I put my hand on the ground, just a finger, it goes to superb, okay? Now, I'm gonna test to see if the tree is a good grounding source because we hear people that are called tree huggers, right? Hugging the tree. Is there some benefit in it? Let's test it out, let's see. So, no ground, no ground. So, the tree hugging thing, isn't always accurate <laughs> at least in this study i know it's not very scientific we don't have a large group of a population of people doing this with me today right now but just in this short quick study the ground works but the, the tree doesn't i don't know what to say now what if i go let's see if this is grounded no ground ground right so I'm touching, I don't see it right now, but I'm touching the metal that's connected to this concrete. My feet are not connected to the earth, but I am able to get a ground. So here it is, hand off, turning on the tester, no ground, hand on, superb ground. You might wanna sit on this if you're gonna do any kind of sitting, you wanna sit on that. No ground. Ooh, that's a superb ground. No ground, superb ground. Putting your body against that is better than putting your body against that. A person doesn't have to go through all of this amount of testing. I'm just showing you this to show you that certain things are grounded, certain things are not. And if you do think that there is a, enough benefit into the, the technology of grounding that's actually free, you know, then try some of these things out. You don't have to have those shoes but if you're standing barefoot on the earth or you're putting your hand on a sink or something that is conductive to the earth, then you are essentially being grounded. I wanna test a few other things just to see if it's, uh, if it's legit or not. And then um, I'm signing off. <laughs> this has been fun. Now I'm gonna test out this little grounding spot to make sure that this is a, a good ground. Nothing, I touched, touched this part of the earth, superb. Hand on, or sorry, hand off, hand on. Hand off, hand on. This is superb ground. Now, if I touch this tree, so no ground, no ground. Let's test this pole. Imagine you're hanging out, waiting for the light to change green. Is this grounded? Let's see, what do you think? No ground? That's a okay ground. Hand off, hand on. This might be a good place to hang out while you're waiting for the light to change. Mm -hmm.